Good morning, classmates. Good morning, sir. We are the group three, and for today, we will discuss or report about the topic, History of Taxation in the Philippines. Timeline, Pre-Colonial Period, 900 to 1521, three types of classes. Tumao class includes Datu, or the nobility of pure royal descent. Timawa class, warrior class or the third rank of nobility and free men, neither chiefs nor slaves, required to render military service to the Datu in Hans, land wars or sea raids. They could acquire property, acquire any job they want, pick their own wives and acquire an alipin. They were, however, expected to pay taxes and support the Maginoo class. They were the only class to pay taxes and hence their importance in the community. Oripun class, commoners and slaves, render services to the Tumao and Timawa for debts or favors. The Alipin did not likely make any money for their services and hence did not pay taxes. Manila, Acapulco Galleon Trade, 1565-1815 A ship trade going back and forth yearly between Manila and Acapulco, fundamental income generating business for the Spanish. The Galleon Trade brought silver from Nueva Castilla and silk from China by way of Manila. Spanish period, 1521-1898 Bandala system, implemented by Spanish authorities in the Philippines that required native Filipino farmers to sell their goods to the government. Also collected were the mandala around stock of rice stocks to be threshed, an annual enforced sale and requisitioning of goods such as rice. Encomendia System 1570 A compliance with the decree issued by King Philip II in 1558 distributed lands in Cebu to loyal Spanish subjects. The Encomendia was not actually a land grant but was a favor from the kind under which the Spaniard receiving his favor was given the right to collect tributes or taxes from the inhabitants of the area assigned to him. The man who received this favor was called an encomendero. The encomenderos were required by law to perform the following duties. First, to give protection to the natives. Second, to help the missionaries convert the natives to Christianity. Third, to promote education. Tribute or breeze, which could be paid in cash or kind, was initially fixed at eight reels, one reel to I mean, one reel equal to 12.5 centavos and later increased to 15 reels, apportioned as follows. One reel to the town community chest, one reel sanctorum tax, three reels for church support, and custom duties and income tax were also collected. Cedula or personal identification paper. The tribute was replaced by the Cidula personal, wherein colonists were required to pay for personal identification. Everyone over the age of 18 was obliged to pay. So during the 17th and 18th centuries, the Contador de Resulta served as the chef royal accountant, whose functions were similar to the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. He was the chief arbitrator whose decision on financial matters were final except when revoked by the Council of Indies. During these times, taxes that were collected from the inhabitants varied from tribute or head tax of one gold maize annually, tax on value of jewelries and gold trinkets, and direct taxes on tobacco, wine, cockpits, borlas, and powder. From 1521 to 1821, the Spanish treasury had to subsidize the Philippines in the amount of 250,000 per annum due to the poor financial condition of the country, which can be primarily attributed to the poor revenue collection system. Take a look at the example of Cidula before. In the year 1884, 
So let's move on. Let's proceed to American period in the year of 1898 to 1946. January 1, 1940. The CEDULA was imposed by the American Swing. The Commonwealth Act number no. 465 went into effect, mandating the imposition of a base residence tax of 50 centavos and additional tax of 1 peso based on factors such as income and real estate holdings. Cedula or CEDIN certificate is a legal identity document in the Philippines. Issued by cities and municipalities to all persons that have reached the age of majority and upon payment of a community tax. It is one of the closest single documents the Philippines has to a national system of identification. A person is required to present a cedula when he or she acknowledges a document before a notary public takes an oath of office upon election or appointment to a government position, receives a license, certificate, or perm permit from a public authority, pays a tax or fee, receives money from public fund, transacts official business, or receive salaries from a person or corporation. Year 1902, the first civil government was established under William H. Taft. However, it was only during the term of second civil governor, Luke A. Wright, that the Bureau of Internal Revenue was created through the passage of Reorganization Act No. 1189. Dated July 2, 1904 to August 1, 1904, the BIR was formally organized and made operational under the Secretary of Finance, Henry E. D. with John S. Ward as the first collector. The first organization started with 69 employees, which consisted of a collector, vice collector, one shift clerk, one law clerk, one records clerk and three division chef. Three division chefs. Following the dinner of John Eastward were three more American collectors, namely Ellis Cromwell, William T. Houting, and Jim C. Rafferty. They were all appointed by the Governor General with the approval of the Philippine Commission and the U.S. President. During the time during the term of collector holding, the Bureau had its first reorganization on January 1, 1913, with the creation of eight divisions, namely accounting, cash, clerical, inspection, law, real estate, license, and records. Collect Collections by the real estate and license division were confined to revenue accruing to the city of Manila. May 1921, the virtue of Act Number no. 299, the real estate, license, and cash divisions were abolished and their functions were transferred to the city of Manila. As a result of this transfer, the Bureau was left with five divisions, namely Administrative, Law, Accounting, Income Tax, and Inspections. Thereafter, the Bureau established the Examiner's Division, formerly the Income Tax Examiner's Section, which was later merged with the Income Tax Division, and the Secret Service, and the Secret Service Section which handled the detection and surveillance and activities but was later abolished on January 1, 1951, except for minor changes and creation of the miscellaneous tax division in 1939. The Bureau's, the Bureau organization remained the same from 1921 to 1941. Year 1937, the Secretary of Finance promulgated Regulation number 95, reorganizing, reorganizing the provincial inspection districts and, man, and maintaining in each 
Province and Internal Revenue Office survive Internal Revenue Office supervised by provincial provincial agent. Japanese regime 1942 to 1945. The outbreak of World War II, the bureau was combined with the customs office and was headed by a director of customs and internal revenue. In the year of 1942, the first issues consisted of denominations of 1, 5, 10, and 50 centavos, and 1, and 5, and 10 pesos. In the year of 1943, the next year brought replacement notes of the 1, and 5, and 10 pesos. Next slide, please. Year 1944, the ushered in a 100 peso note and soon after, an inflationary 500 pesos note. A box of matches cost more than 100 Mickey Mouse pesos. During January, inflation plagued the country with the devaluation of the Japanese money evidenced by a 60% inflation. In the year 1945, the Japanese issued a 1,000 pesos note, this set of new money, which was printed even before the war, become known in the Philippines as Mickey Mouse money. Due to its very low value caused by severe inflation, a kilogram of kamote costs around 1,000 Mickey Mouse money. And the picture below, that was the example of 1,000 Mickey Mouse money. Next slide, please. In July 23, 1943, the Japanese Occupation Administration in the Philippine Islands has imposed a special war tax on all Jews. According to a report appearing in the Diochi Biobacter in Asia, a copy of which was received here today. The German report states that wealthy Jews who own real estate and big business concern will be forced to surrender 50% of their holdings. Other Jews will be obliged to pay a tax equivalent to one-third the value of all their possessions. July 4, 1946, Philippines gained its independence from the United States. The Bureau was eventually re-established separately. In October 1, 1947, this led to a reorganization by virtue of Executive Order No. 94, wherein the following were undertaken. According unit in the Revenue Accounts and Statistical Division were merged into one. All records in the Records Section under the Administrative Division were consolidated, and all legal work were centralized in the Law Division. Next slide, please. October 23, 1947. Revenue Regulations No. V2 dated divided the country into 31 inspection units, each of which was under a provincial revenue agent, except in certain special units which were headed by a city revenue agent or supervisors for the salaries and tobacco factories. In January 1, 1951, the second major reorganization of the Bureau took place on through the passage of Executive Order No. 392. New departments were created, namely Legal, Assessment, and Collection. March 1, 1954, the third major reorganization of the Bureau took effect through Revenue Memorandum Order No. 41. This led to the creation of the offices, which are specific tax division, litigation section, processing section in office of the city revenue examiner. In September 1, 1954, training unit was created through RMO number V4 to 47. Next slide, please. In January 1957, the position title of the head of the bureau was changed from collector to commissioner. The last collector and the first commissioner of the BIR was Jose Aranas. In the year of 1958, a significant step undertaken by the bureau, the establishment of the tax census division and the corresponding tax census unit for each regional office. 
This was done to consol consolidate all statements of assets, incomes, and liabilities of all individual and resident corporations in the Philippines into a national tax census. In June 19, 1959, to strictly enforce the payment of taxes and to further discourage tax evasion. Republic Act No. 233, or the Rewards Law, was passed, whereby informers were rewarded the 25% equivalent of the revenue collected from the tax evader. In the year 1964, Philippines was redivided anew into 15 regions and 72 inspection districts. The Tobacco Inspections Board and Accountable Forms Committee were also created directly under the Office of the Commissioner. Ferdinand Emmanuel Adrian Marcos Senior Administration, 1965 and 1986. The appointment of Ms. Elvera as Commissioner led the uh, Bureau. The most notable programs implemented were the Blue Master programs adapted to curb the abuses of both the taxpayers and BIR personnel and the voluntary tax compliance program was designed to encourage professionals in the private and government sectors to report their true income and to pay the correct amount of taxes. It was also during a commissioner various administration that the country was further subdivided into 20 regional offices and 19 revenue district offices. In addition to the creation of various offices, which included the Internal Audit Department, replacing the Inspection Department, Administrative Service Department, International Tax Affairs Staff, and Specific Tax Department. Year 1917 Providing age taxpayers with a permanent tax account number in shortcut TEN not only facilitated the identification of taxpayers but also resulted to faster verification of tax records. Similarly, the payment of taxes through banks or pair executive order number 206 as well as the implementation of the package audit and investigation by industry are considered to be important measures which contributed significantly to the improved collection performance of the Bureau. September 21, 1972, the proclamation of the martial law marked the advent of the new society and ushered in a new approach in the developmental effort of the government. And then, the year 1972 and 1980, Bureau had also undergone several changes during the martial law period. Year 1976, under Commissioner Elfram Piana's administrations, the Bureau's National Office transferred from the Finance Building in Manila to its own 12-story building in Quezon City. Inaugurated on June 3, 1977. Year 1977, President Marcos promulgated the National Internal Revenue Code of 1977, which updated the 1934 tax code. August 1, 1980, Buryu was further reorganized under the administrations of Commissioner Robin Anchenta. New offices were created and some organizational units were relocated for the purpose of making the Bureau more responsive to the needs of the tax-paying public. Corazon Aquino Administration 1936 to 1992 February 1986, after the People's Revolution Arena Trust towards an effective tax administration was pursued by the Bureau, Operation Walang Lagay was launched to the promote the efficient and honest collection of taxes. January 13, 1987, Bureau was reorganized under the administration of Commission Bienvenido Tan Jr. First one to executive order on shortcut EO number 127. 
under the set EO, two major functional groups headed and supervised by a deputy commissioner were created and these were assessment and collection group and the legal and internal administration group. Year 1988, the Revenue Information System Services Incorporation (REC) was published and transferred back to the BII by virtue of a memorandum order from the Office of the President dated May 24, 1988. This transfer had application on the delivery of the computerization requirements of the Bureau in relation to its function of tax assessment and collection. The entry of Commissioner Jose Ong in 1989, so the advent of the tax administration program, which is embodiment of the Bureau's mission to improve tax collection and simplify tax administration the program contained several tax reform and enhancement measures which included the uses of tax payer identification number in shortcut tin and the uh, adoption of the new payment control system and simply five net income taxation scheme the continuation Fidel Valdez Ramos administration from 1992 to 1998. In year of 1993 marked the entry into the Bureau of its First Lady Commissioner Liwai Y. Vincent Jatu in order to attain the Bureau's vision of transformation, a comprehensive and integrated program known as the ACTS or Action Center Transformation Program was undertaken to realign and direct the interorganization towards the fulfillment of its vision and mission. Commissioner Chatu's term that a five-year tax computerization project or TCP was undertaken in year 1994. This involved the establishment of a modern and computerized integrated tax system and internal administration system. Further streamlining of BIR was approved on July 1997 through the passage of EO number 430 in order to support the implementation of the computerized integrated tax system. Highlights of the said EO included the creation of the Fourth Revenue Group in the BAR, which is the legal enforcement group headed by a deputy commissioner and the creation of the Internal Affairs Service, Taxpayers Assistance Service, Infor Information Planning and Quality Service, and the Revenue Data Centers. Jose Marcelo Ejercito Estrada Administration from 1998 to 2001 Deputy Commissioner of the BIR Beethoven Rualo was appointed as Commissioner of Internal Revenue. One of the most significant reform measures was the implementation of Economic Recovery Assistance Payment or ERA program which granted immunity from audit and investigation to taxpayers who have paid 20% more than the tax paid in 1997 for income tax, VAT, and percentage taxes. Memorandum of agreement were also forged with the League of Local Government Units, several private sector and professional organizations, which are MAP, TMAP, PCCI, FFCCCI, and etc. to help the BAR implement tax campaign initiatives. On September 1, 2000, the Large Taxpayer Service or LTS and the Excise Taxpayers Service or ETS were established under EO number 175 to reinforce the tax administration and enforcement capabilities of the BIR. Shortly after the establishment of said revenue services, a new organizational structure was approved on October 31, 2001 under EO 306, which resulted in the integration of the function of the ETS and the LTS in line with the passage of the Electronic Commerce Act 2000 on June 14, the Bureau implemented a full integrated tax system or ITS rollout acceleration program to facilitate the full utilization of tax computerization in the Bureau's operation under the program 7 ITS back-end system where released in the stages in RR8, McCarty City, and the Large Taxpayer Service. Yeah, 
Maria Gloria Macaray Macapagal Arroyo Administration from 2001 to 2010. On January 2001, newly installed President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo appointed a former Deputy Commissioner, Attorney Rene G. Banyas as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Under Commissioner Banya's administration, the BIR Trust was to transform the agency to make it taxpayer-focused. This was undertaken through the implementation of change initiatives that were directed to reform the tax system to make it simpler and suit the Philippine culture, re-engineer the tax processes to make them simpler, more efficient, and transparent, restructure the BIR to give it financial and administ administrative flexibility, redesign the human resource policies, systems, and procedures to do transform the workforce to be more responsive to taxpayers' needs. On October 28, 2006, Deputy Commissioner for Legal and Inspection Group, Jose Mario Buñag was appointed as full-fledged Commissioner of Internal Revenue under his administration. The Bureau attained in success number of key undertakings, which include the expansion of rate program, to the regional office inclusion of new payment gateways. In year of 2007, National Program Support for Tax Administration Reform or NP STAR, a program funded by various international development agencies was launched to improve the, the BAR efficiency in various areas of tax administration with taxpayer in compliance, tax enforcement, and control. On June 29, 2007, Commissioner Bunya relinquished the top post of the BIR and was replaced by the Deputy Commissioner for Operation Group, Lillian B. Hefty, making her the second Lady Commissioner of the BIR. Commissioner Hefty focused on the threatening of the use business intelligence by embarking on data matching income payments of withholding agents against reported income of the concerned recipients. Information sharing between the BAR and local government units was also intensified through the LGU Revenue Assurance System, which aims to uncover fraud and unpayment of taxes. To enhance the Bureau audit capabilities, the use of computer-assisted audit tools and techniques was also introduced in the BAR under her term. On October 2008, the resignation of Commissioner Hefty, former BIR Deputy Commissioner for Legal Enforcement Group 62S Cuevas IV, was appointed as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Commissioner Cuevas administration was marked with the conduct of nationwide closure of airing business establishment under Oplan Cadado program. A taxpayer feedback mechanism through the in compliant facility accessible via the BAR website was also established under his term where compliance on airing BAR employees and taxpayers who do not pay taxes and do not issue ORs or invoices can be reported. In 2009, Bureau revived its Handang Maglingkod project where the best frontline offices were recognized for rendering effective taxpayer service. When on 2009, month of November, Commissioner Cuevas resigned as Senior Deputy Commissioner. Jovel L. Tan Torres assumed the position of Commissioner of Internal Revenue. Under his administration, Commissioner Tan Torres pursued high visibility public awareness campaign on the Bureau Information and Taxpayer Service Programs. He institutionalized several programs and projects to improve revenue collection, and these include Project RIP or rest and peace intensified filing tax invasion cases under the reinvigorated rate program conduct of taxpayers lifestyle check and development of industry champion linkages with various agencies which are LTO SEC, BLGF and Paltra and etc. were also established through the signing of several memorandum of agreement to improve the specific areas of tax administration. Benigno Simeon Cuanco Aquino III, Administration 2010 to 2016. The highly acclaimed inauguration of President Benigno C. Aquino III on June 30, 2010. A former BIR Deputy Commissioner, Attorney Kim S. Jacinto Hinares, was appointed as the new Commissioner of Internal Revenue. 
During her first few months in the BIR, Commissioner Hinaris focused on the filing of tax evasion cases under the rate program, in compliance with the SONA pronouncement of President Aquino. Philippine Constitution sets limitation on the exercise of the power to tax. The rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. The Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. All money collected on any tax levied for a special purpose shall be treated as a special fund and paid out for such purpose only. If the purpose for which a special fund was created has been fulfilled or abundant, the balance, if any, shall be transferred to the general funds of the government. The Congress may, by law, authorize the President to fix within specified limits and subject to such limitations and restriction as it may impose tariff rates, import and export quotas, tonnage and warfare dues, and other duties or imposts within the framework of the National Development Program of the Government. The President shall have the power to veto any particular item or items in an appropriation, revenue or tariff bill, but the veto shall not affect the item or items to which he does not object. The Supreme Court shall have the power to review, revise, reverse, modify or affirm on appeal or certiorari as the law of the rules of court may provide. Final judgments and orders of lower courts in all cases involving the legality of any tax, imposed, assessment, or toll or any penalty imposed in relation. Tax exemptions are limited to those granted by law. However, no law granting any tax exemption shall be passed without the concurrence of a majority of all the members of the Congress. The Constitution expressly grants tax exemption on certainties or institutions such as charitable institutions, churches, parsonages, or convents appurtenant thereto, mosques and non-profit cemeteries and all lands, buildings and improvements actually, directly and exclusively used for religious charitable or educational purposes. In addition to national taxes, the Constitution provides for local government taxation. Parenthetically, the Local Government Code provides that all local government units are granted general tax powers, as well as other revenue-raising powers like the imposition of service fees and charges, in addition to those specifically granted to each of the local government units. But no such taxes Fees and charges shall be imposed without a public hearing having been held prior to the enactment of the ordinance. The levy must not be unjust, excessive, oppressive, confiscatory, or contrary to a declared national economic policy. Further, there are common limitations to the grant of the power to tax to the local government, such that taxes like income tax, documentary stamp tax, and etc., and cannot be imposed by the local government. The basic source of Philippine tax law is the National Internal Revenue Law, which codifies all tax provisions, the latest of which is embodied in Republic Act No. 8424, the Tax Reform Act of 1997. It amended previous National Internal Revenue Codes, which is approved on December 11, 1997, the Secretary of Finance, upon the recommendation of the Commissioner, promulgates needful rules and regulations for the effective enforcement of the provisions of the Tax Code, Section 244, Tax Code of 1997. The Commissioner of Internal Revenue, however, has the exclusive and original power to interpret the provisions of the tax code, but subject to review by the Secretary of Finance. Administrative issuances, which may be relied upon in interpreting the provisions of the tax code, which are assigned by the Secretary of Finance or the commis Commissioner of Internal Revenue, or his duly authorized representative, come in the form of revenue regulations, 
Revenue Memorandum Orders, Revenue Memorandum Rulings, Revenue Memorandum Circulars, and BIR Rulings. Revenue Regulations or RRs are issuances signed by the Secretary of Finance upon recommendation of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue that specify, prescribe, or define rules and regulations for the effective enforcement of the provisions of the National Internal Revenue Code or NIRC and related statutes. Revenue Memorandum Orders, or RMOs, are issuances that provide directives or instructions, prescribe guidelines, and outline processes, operations, activities, workflows, methods, and procedures necessary in the impl implementation of stated policies, goals, objectives, plans and programs of the Bureau in all areas of operations except auditing. Revenue Memorandum Circular or RMCs are issuances that publish pertinent and applicable portions as well as amplifications of laws, rules, regulations, and precedents issued by the BIR and other agencies or offices. Lastly, local government taxation in the Philippines is based on the constitutional grant of the power to tax to the local governments. Local taxes may be imposed as the constitution grants to each local government unit the power to create its own sources of revenues and to levy taxes, fees, and charges which shall accrue to the local governments in Article 10, Section 5. With respect to national taxes, local government units shall have a just share as determined by law in the national taxes which shall be automatically released to them in Article 10, Section 6. And now that would be all for our report. Thank you so much for listening. And we hope that you have a great day. Thank you.